All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to properly gain stage a microphone. And before us, we have an analog console, which is the Mackie Pro FX 16 V3. It is a 16 channel analog board, but it does have a USB audio interface built in, which now I am running through a USB B they call it, I call it a printer cable too, into my computer via USB A. So that's how you're hearing the audio today. And so we're gonna look at this and see how to properly gain stage a microphone. Uh, first of all, I want you to look at input three on this particular mixer, which now I know you probably can't see it. We'll go back to the main camera or maybe the overhead. I got a shotgun microphone, which I was speaking a little off axis there to show it to you, but this is a Sennheiser shotgun microphone and you will not see those in churches, I wouldn't think, but it's the one I'm using right now. We use a couple other examples as well, but I have this one so I can have it out of the shot and to show you the mixer. So. We've plugged that in via three pin XLR connection at the top. Notice that we have come to the first stage in what we call the audio signal chain. And by audio signal chain, what I mean is from source, which would be me speaking into the microphone, going through the XLR cable, in this case, directly to the mixer, and then coming through all the effects and EQs and then going out and then being recorded into the computer. A church example of that would be from source to microphone to microphone cable to analog or digital snake, depending on your setup, and then going into the mixer and then any effects as you're going through and then to outboarding effects or whatever, and then going out to the amplifiers and from the amplifiers through the speaker cable through the loudspeaker or PA system or speakers or monitors. Okay, so that would be the audio signal chain. What are all the chains in the link? And more links in the chain, the more problems you could potentially have. You need to know that when it comes to troubleshooting. But for this video, I'm just going to show you how to properly gain stage. This is one of the most important parts that you need to get right. It's so vitally important you get gain set correctly. We call it gain staging, setting gain. And the reason it's so important, if you do not get this correct, it's going to affect everything down the line. So notice it is the first thing we come to in a mixer means it's first and foremost, and it is important. And inside of this three pin XLR connection that we've made, there is a preamp. What does the preamp do? It does exactly what it sounds like. It pre before amplifies the sound, uh, not the sound, but it amplifies the microphone. A microphone has a sends out a very low signal and it must be pre amplified to a listable level to travel through the rest of the system. So that's why it's so important. In this Mackie mixer, it's good, it's affordable. I've installed them into a lot of churches. If you're interested, the link is in the description below and it's pretty versatile. But does it have the, bre the best preamps, which is what you're really purchasing and buying? Well, it has good ones, but not the best. And the reason I would tell that is the more I turn up the gain in my headphones, how far can I go before I hear a hiss, which is self noise. So keep that in mind when buying a mixer. You get what you pay for, I'll tell you that. Now we go down, there is another button, which is low cut or high pass as it's called sometimes. This would cut out 100 hertz or less. So anything below 100 hertz. On voices, spoken word, and singing, I guess, except for a bass voice, I'd go ahead and press it. I pressed it there and engaged it. Probably didn't hear much of a difference, but it will do away with the low noise and the rumble. Then we come to gain. And as you can see, 
I do have it. Now, a good rule of thumb when you come to gain is gain is not volume. Gain is we're boosting the signal right here. Think about the main water line in your home or business or your church. The main water line coming in the building. That valve is gain. So we've got to allow enough water in to travel through all this system, through the inputs, and then come out the main and still have enough to go around. We can't let a, a little drop come in here and expect a whole lot to come out on the outset. So to properly set gain, a good rule of thumb that I found, as you can see, it goes from zero to plus 40, I believe the inner circle there, we got unity, I see that. And one of the circles is gonna be for line and one's gonna be for the microphone level. But this, I've noticed that you need to turn it at least to two to three o'clock before you're ever gonna see much of anything. So if I turn this down, you'll see I get quieter and I don't turn it all the way down because you wouldn't hear me at all. But as I increase the gain, what I'm looking to do, and actually what I can do, I believe, is mute the channel on my end because I'm coming out USB and I don't even have to worry about this fader now. I can turn it all the way down to negative infinity and you want to move until you see a good healthy indicator light on the green. So you see as I'm speaking into the microphone that I'm getting a good healthy green light. That's what you want. Now not all of them have lights and it that's on the Mackie boards, but another way to tell it is I got a good healthy level right here. When I get a green, let me keep turning. All right, that's, that's pretty good. And now what we'll do is since we're getting, you know, a light every once in a while, that tells us a little bit, but we need to know more. Come down and you can see I depressed the button, which is PFL solo. Uh, solo PFL means pre-fader listen. Pre-fader listen. That means I'm soloing this channel only and I'm hearing it out of my headphones here. So what I need to do is depress it. It singles out this, this channel strip and you can see now I'm only on the one side and we have this, uh, which I think is kind of funny. It says rude solo and I used to wonder what that even meant. So we're being a little rude right now, solo in this, I guess. But it is a solo. <clears throat> and as you can see on this particular microphone, on an analog board, we are hitting around zero. So you want to hit, you want to light up all the green and sometimes the yellow a little bit when you get a little louder, but never the red because that would be clipping. I can allow you to hear clipping a little bit or distortion. Let me turn my headphones down. And if you get too loud, you'll be out of range and you will hear this terrible noise that you're hearing right now, which is distortion. You have overdriven the preamps and you don't know what you're doing. Okay, so you need to set gain properly. And I'm adjusting my headphones because I didn't want to blow my ears out. So you can see I'm getting a good indicator light here and I'm coming up about to zero when I'm speaking in a normal voice and I want to allow some headroom so that if I get louder and especially for pastors, pastors have a wide and singers have a wide dynamic range. In fact, the voice itself has a wide dynamic range that we can go from a whisper to a shout really quickly. And I'm going to show you something else about that can help as well, especially for the pastors out there, because we ought to have the ability to do what? Speak in a quieter voice and to, at times, get louder. So as you can see, it's going up to zero, and I've allowed headroom. Now, one of the things that I would do next is don't forget to take off PFL, and we will bring up the fader to unity gain. And we can see that, of course, I'm hooked up by USB. I would bring up my main and now I'm sending it to the main mix. The only thing coming through it going out put is the one track. Now let's look at another type of microphone, which requires 
much more gain. It's gain hungry, and that would be a dynamic microphone. One other thing that I see right now that's very important is this button right here that says 48 volt. This particular microphone I'm speaking into right now is a condenser microphone, requires 48 volt phantom power. Sometimes it's kind of a local thing on each channel. It gives you opportunity to turn down 48 volt. And some, like this Mackie board and others, you have to depress 48 volt phantom power for the whole entire board. So if you get a microphone and you connect it and it's just not working, it may be that you just didn't engage 48 volt phantom power. Let's look at another microphone to plug in. And we're gonna look at this one, which is a dynamic microphone. And this particular microphone is a broadcast dynamic road Procaster. And it's a very good sounding, a very heavy duty microphone that you may use for podcasting or YouTube videos or tutorials, a very good sounding microphone for the money. And I really like it sound incredibly well. And so I'm going to plug that up and we're going to have to start over here. I'm going to mute the channel. Okay. Now we are powering up the Rode Procaster and this is what it sounds like. And because it is a dynamic microphone, because it's a dynamic microphone, it requires more gain. And you can see it has a different tone to it. This would be more for podcast and that type of thing. As you can see, I'm speaking away from the microphone because if I have it right in front of my mouth, we're going to get a lot of plosives is when the, the letter P and B, that burst of air that <laughs> puffs out of your mouth, when you say those words, will hit the diaphragm of the microphone and give you that big pop. So I'm trying to avoid that. I've made some plosives already, but I'm trying my best to speak off axis. I don't have a foam cover for it right now. So we'll have to bear with me. Now you can see as we come in here to channel five, I've got the Rode Procaster hooked into channel five. And you can see I have turned it up to about plus 50 dB. So don't feel like that's strange if you have to do that. One of the things I need to do is I have it on PFL and I'm getting a little too much. So let me bring that down and bring my headphones up. Okay, it's a balancing act. And maybe about right in there gives enough room for the dynamic range. We want to make sure that we're getting the right levels and we're getting the indicator light and sometimes you'll get that and sometimes it's a little weak but i would go more by the pfl if it was me to solo this channel alone and go by that to give myself some dynamic range all right so you can see that i mean headroom so you can see there's uh, we're on the zero and that's uh, pretty good especially if i'm gonna speak in this normal voice the whole time or podcast or video and we've set gain correctly because we're probably plus, or we could say we're at three o'clock, which is typical. And everything, we're going to level it out. And I hadn't done that before. Make sure they're all level. I did have a lot of base there that I had put in. I just took that out. Everything else is leveled down the board. So that is bringing to unity. And this is properly gain staging a dynamic microphone. Remember, they require more gain the typical uh they're quieter microphones they're more passive and they require more gain and there's benefits to that if you have a room that's not treated you would want to use a dynamic microphone let's try one more and just get an idea of what that sounds like which will be another condenser large diaphragm condenser microphone that you may find in your church all right, now we're back with a different type of microphone, which is a large diaphragm condenser microphone. This is the Tech Zone Audio Stellar X2 Vintage. That's a mouthful, but that's what it is. It's a large diaphragm condenser microphone with a cardioid pickup pattern. I mean, it picks up just right here in front of the microphone. And you may see this in an instrument or a group of folks standing around that would sing into a condenser microphone. Let me show it to you real quick from the overhead camera.
So you can see that it is a uh, real nice microphone and you would definitely want to use this in a treated space if you're using it in a home studio. But I have went ahead and gain stage it, gain staged it. And so you can see that I had to go to about two o'clock, not as much as I did for the dynamic microphone, but I did bring it to about two o'clock and I'm getting a good healthy level on the green indicator light. And I've pressed, of course, I've got it uh, muted because it doesn't matter. I'm using the, the USB evidently, and it doesn't matter, it seems. And then we have the PFL pre-fader listen, so I can hear it through my headphones. And then over here, we got the one light on the left side, and it is showing from where I'm holding the microphone at a good distance, which I encourage any microphone is going to sound better closer to the source. So I'm about three inches away from the microphone, and this is what it sounds like. And we're hitting about zero. I think we could come down just a little bit to leave a little more headroom for dynamic range. May not be getting the strongest uh, green light, but that doesn't matter. As long as it's lighting up every once in a while, like I said, this is more accurate. And in fact, I think I could bring it even down a little more. All right. So that's what it sounds like. And then if I was sending this, I would undo it. And now when I unmute it, you can hear it coming through the left. It's coming through the left and the right. And we're lighting up most of the green and maybe some of the yellow if I was to get real loud, which I will not, and no red. So we're in good shape. So trust this video has been a help to you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And if you found value in this video, please give it a like, a share, or comment. And we'll see you in the next one. We'll continue to do our tutorial on the breakdown of this analog mixer, the Mackie Pro FX 16 V3. We'll see you in the next video.